Thank you, Speaker, sir. It's nice to be speaking uh, for the first time in the new house in your presence. I stand in support of the Women's Reservation Bill. Yesterday, I was listening to the discussion and the issue of the Sengol came up. And there was a conversation, a to and fro, about the Sengol. And also a little bit about the conversation about the transfer of power from the British to the people of India. Before handing over power to the people of India, the British asked the leadership of the freedom movement, who are we going to transfer power to? And of course there was a little bit of arrogance in this statement because they viewed India as a poor country. And the revolutionary answer that our freedom fighters gave was we are going to transfer power to the people of India. So we, so we became a country that from its inception gave the vote to all our women. And this was a revolutionary thing at the time. We also gave the vote to every single community. And the vote was a mechanism of transfer of power. It was designed to further transfer power to the people of India. And if you look at the journey from independence, it's been that journey. It's been a constant transfer of power, more and more and more power to the people of India, on one side. And on the other side, the counter idea, that take away power from the people of India. This is the, this is the fight that is going on. And in fact, in many ways, it is the fight that is taking place today. Huge step forward in the transfer of power to the women of India was Panchayati Raj, where they were given reservation and they were allowed to enter the political system at scale. And this is another step. It's a big step, it is not a small step. And I'm sure everybody in this room, the treasury benches, the opposition, everybody, agrees that this is a very important step for the women of our country. They have, they fought for independence. They are as capable as any man in many ways more capable and should be given as much space as they possibly can be given. There is one thing in my view that makes this bill incomplete. I would like to have seen OBC reservation included in this bill. I think it is very important that a large chunk of India's population, large chunk of India's women should have access to this reservation. And that is missing in this bill. There are also two things that seem strange to me. One is the idea that you require a new census 
to implement this bill. And the second is that you require a new delimitation to implement this bill. In my view, it is quite simple. This bill can be implemented today by giving 33% of the seats in the Lok Sabha and the Vidhan Sabha to India's women. And so I wonder if this is not designed to push the ball forward. To push the ball forward seven, eight, nine years and then let this thing play out the way it does. I know my friends tend to like to take the attention of people away from other issues. You know, there is of course the Adani issue, which is they always want to take the attention away. But there is another yeah, yeah, I, I would like to say that. One of the things that, this is quite a nice building. Nice, nice peacocks. Nice peacock feathers on the ground. Nice peacock feathers in the chair. It's a nice, tasteful building. But frankly, I would have liked to see the President of India in this, in this process. The President of India is a woman. She represents the tribal community and it would have been befitting to have her visible in this transfer from one house to the other. So one of the things that the government likes to distract from, of course, is Mr. Adani. And there is another thing that the government likes to distract everybody from. And that thing is called the caste census. For some reason, and I don't quite understand what this reason is, the moment the opposition raises the issue of caste census, the BJP tries to create a new distraction, a new, a new sudden, you know, event, so that the OBC community and the people of India look the other way. In my research for this speech, I took a look at the different institutions that define how our country moves forward. There are many. There is the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, Vidhan Sabhas, there is the bureaucracy, there is the press, and I, there's the judiciary, and I looked, and I looked with an eye to understand what is the participation of the OBC community in these institutions. मतलब हमारे जो institutions हैं उनमें OBC की भागीदारी कितनी है ये सवाल मैं पूछ रहा था और मैंने अलग-अलग institutions में थोड़ा research किया जो जो central Hindustan, the Hindustan, the central, don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't be scared, don't be scared, we are discussing, daro mat, daro mat, we are talking about the daro mat, so, so mene, I checked, simple, simple thing I did, I said, look, what is the most important set of people in the government of India. The people who define how this country is governed. Of course, Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha, but beyond that, they are 
the 90 secretaries of the government of India. 90 people, secretaries, are responsible for managing the core of the government of India. And I ask myself the question, how many of the 90 people come from the OBC community? And, and I, was, I was shocked and shattered by the answer. मैं मैंने अपने मैंने ये सवाल पूछा कि ये जो 70 सेक्रेटरी हैं सॉरी 90 सेक्रेटरी हैं ये जो हिंदुस्तान की सरकार को चलाते हैं जो बजट को चलाते हैं इनमें से ओबीसी कितने हैं नरेंद्र मोदी जी प्रधानमंत्री हैं ओबीसी के लिए काम करते हैं मैंने ये सवाल पूछा मैं आपको जवाब देना चाहता हूं हिंदुस्तान के सेक्रेटरीज 90 में से सिर्फ तीन ओबीसी से हैं और सुनिए और सुनिए और सुनिए नहीं घबराइए मत डरो मत और सुनिए ये जो ये जो सेक्रेटरीज हैं जो ओबीसी कम्युनिटी से हैं ये हिंदुस्तान के सिर्फ पांच परसेंट बजट को कंट्रोल करते हैं मतलब अगर हिंदुस्तान का बजट 44 लाख करोड़ का है तो ये 2.47 लाख करोड़ मतलब 5 परसेंट कंट्रोल करते हैं और सुनिए और सुनिए मैं कर रहा हूं मैं वहीं आ रहा हूं मतलब ये जो है ये जो है आप ये ओबीसी की बात नहीं सुनना चाहते 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 आप ओबीसी के खिलाफ हैं आप ओबीसी के खिलाफ हैं ओबीसी के खिलाफ हैं आप ओबीसी के बारे में नहीं सुनना चाहते ओबीसी के बारे में नहीं सुनना चाहते ओबीसी के प्रति नहीं चाहते ओबीसी के प्रति न्याय नहीं होना चाहिए ये ये सी दे नॉट शोइंग यू नथिंग ये ये जो है हां मैं माननीय सदस्य से आग्रह करूंगा एक मिनट एक मिनट एक मिनट एक मिनट रुकिए एक मिनट रुकिए माननीय सदस्य से मैं आग्रह करूंगा एक तो ये महिला आरक्षण बिल है और दूसरा सभी माननीय सदस्य समान है डरो मतो डरो मतो ये शब्द इस पार्लियामेंट में नहीं बोलना चाहिए सर ये जो डिस्कशन है सर स्पीकर सर दिस डिस्कशन दिस स्पीकर सर दिस स्पीकर सर दिस डिस्कशन इज अबाउट द ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर टू द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया the women being one group of the people of india and the obc community being another group of the people of india and i am elaborating that the obcs who number a huge percentage have 3% of the 90 secretaries of this country and control and define 5% of india's budget this is an insult and a shame to the obc community सी कम्युनिटी का अपमान है तो सवाल उठता है कि इस देश में कितने ओबीसी हैं कितने दलित हैं कितने आदिवासी हैं और उस सवाल का जवाब सिर्फ का सेंसस से मिल सकता है तो मेरा सरकार को एक सुझाव है सबसे पहले ये जो महिला का बेल है इसको आप पास कीजिए आज पास कीजिए ये जो आपके लागू कीजिए और ये जो डीलिमिटेशन है जो आपने बोला है और ये जो सेंसस है इसकी कोई जरूरत नहीं है 33 परसेंट आप महिलाओं को सीधा दे दीजिए और दूसरी बात दूसरी बात इसको बदलिए इसको आप बदलिए कैमरा नहीं है सर कैमरा नहीं है आपको दिखाएंगे सर भाषण में आपको ये 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 आप ये ये आप बदलिए ये ये जो लिस्ट है 
ये ओबीसी समाज का अपमान है नब्बे लोग हिंदुस्तान के सेक्रेटरी हैं उनमें से तीन लोग ओपीसी समाज के हैं पांच परसेंट बजट को कंट्रोल करते हैं तो जल्दी से जल्दी जल्दी से जल्दी आप कास्ट सेंसस कीजिए जल्दी से जल्दी जो हमने कास्ट सेंसस किया था उसका डेटा आप रिलीज कीजिए और अगर आप नहीं करेंगे तो हम कर डालेंगे थैंक यू